Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining um, our our demonstration uh, here. Uh, we're excited to introduce to you our our first public API to do with checking in, to do with automating your check-in. So we're super excited to go through this with you. Um, I'm Luke. I'm the product marketing lead here at Cadence, and I'm here joined by these two lovely chaps who I'll let um, I'll let them introduce themselves. Take it away, fellas. Thank you very much, Luke. So my name is Jimmy Addis, and I'm the CTO here at Cadence. Um, and I'm similarly to Luke. I'm very excited to be talking today about all of the possibilities that our new API is going to bring. Thanks, Jamie. I'm Mark Bailey. I'm engineering director here at Cadence, and I'm looking forward to demoing um, our public API to you all today. Fantastic. We were um, we were uh, just talking on um, on this as a team uh, a couple of weeks back, and actually, I think that is you know as as simple as this is. Um, actually it's solving a very very big problem um that we wanted to do something about for our customers so jamie i don't know if you wanted to just just to start off with talking about what problems our customers were facing um, and what they were experiencing and what we set out to do about solving solving that problem sure thing luke so what we discovered is our Customers are all using our platform really to focus on coordinating their people and their space. And our platform is excellent at doing those things. But humans are humans and are great at doing things that there's some payoff for them personally in and they get some value return. So if I am going into an office and I want to collaborate with people then I'll book a desk so that I have somewhere to sit. It also lets my colleagues know where to find me. And that's super valuable to me. So it's really easy for me as a person to get behind. But what we find is a lot of our customers, actually the admins and the facilities managers, the C-suite, they want to know not just who is booked to come in, but actually who is who is coming into the office and sitting down and using the space. So what is the real occupancy, not the planned occupancy? And to do that, we have a facility in our system called checking in. So when a user arrives at the desk, they can say, yes, I'm here, check in. And that actually gives you real analytics as to what your space usage is like. And what we saw is actually that's a really hard thing to get people to do because it's a new learned behavior for people. You know, typically most companies are coming from a, a pre-pandemic experience where everybody's in the office nine to five, nobody has to book a desk. And some of these behaviors are just new and people forget. Um, and so where we go from that is then the, the Facilities managers, the C-suite, all of those, all of those people aren't getting the granularity of data they would like. Also, sometimes a colleague is walking over to the desk that somebody's meant to be sitting at and finding they're not there and they have no way to know. So what we have done is we've, we've spoken to a lot of our customers about this um, and they have lots of ideas actually as to how they would like to improve this some of it, it and it varies greatly everything from connection to the corporate wi-fi to swiping your badge at the door to occupancy sensors under the desk to um facial recognition cameras on the door to um geolocation on a mobile device and there's this wide gamut of how um, companies would like to solve the problem. And really what that has led us down the road of doing then is saying that's great. 
you want to innovate, you want to do something that's completely bespoke and custom to your office, to your specific scenario, we want to support you in that. And that's exactly why we've built this public API focused on check-in, is it gives our customers the flexibility to implement the solution that works for them. You know, you work in a, in a shared building, so you don't actually have access to the badge swipe data because you don't control it. That's fine. Chances are you control the Wi-Fi network, though, so you can pick it up off that. Or you have an occupancy sensor under the desk. You know, it's a rollout you've done. So you want to be getting value from that investment. Well, then you can use those instead. Um, really, it's about us offering flexibility to our customers so that they can tailor the solution in a way that works for them. Perfect. And yeah, as as Jamie was saying, a learned behavior or trying or getting getting your your employees to 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 learn a new behavior um, can be quite challenging. But actually taking taking out some of the complexities and streamlining your workplace just so it's 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 more automated. It's easier. Your people are having a fantastic experience. They can just walk in and access the spaces they need. And on the other on the other hand, our customers, um, the facility managers in the C suite, as you were saying, are getting the granularity of accurate data, so they will always know exactly how their spaces are used, so they can, you know, as you were saying, reduce costs where they can, or or save on wasted space, or maybe hey, this these rooms aren't being used on Wednesday afternoons because that's typically an off day, less. I don't know, sublet those rooms out so they are used. And there's so many different ways and avenues that one can go in to to reduce costs and to really streamline how their workplaces are are run and ultimately, you know, boosting team productivity as well by facilitating your people's needs and their demands for the spaces that they 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 need for the task at hand. So um, let's get to the good bit. Mark is going to take us through um, our API, how to set it up, what that looks like in the Cadence web app, um, and how to get going. So do you want to take it away, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start by um, going really to the launch pad of where you need to go to get started with the public API. So um, at api.cadence.co, we have everything that you need to know to get uh, up and running with public API. And um, this is really the, the reference point. It has all of the information in it that you need to know about all of the APIs that we have available. And um, we've also written a couple of support articles um, that we've tied into the this page that will let you um, get up and running. Um, so I'm just going to click into the, the getting started guide as a, as a first point of call um, and really what this does is it tells you how to to get set up so um the first thing that you'll need to do is create an api key or a username and password essentially so that you can authenticate with our apis and um, that's very simple you can do that within the existing web application it's just going into settings and i'll demo that in a second and um, from with from within this page, we also have extra bits and pieces of information about how you call the APIs in order to authenticate the likes. I'll, I'll demo that so that you can see essentially what it is that I've done in order to do it. Um, we've also got a couple of sub articles off this that will let you understand how you combine the API documentation method, the methods that are in the API documentation together in order to achieve certain tasks. So further on down here, we have and um, quick start guides and check in to book. This is one of them as an example. Um, I'll just show you how to set up an API key, which is very simple. So you just log into Cadence as normal, go to settings, and there's an API key section um, within here. You click add an API key, give it a name that's meaningful to you. So I'm just going to call it Mark's sample key just to show you how to create one. It also needs to have a, a valid description. So we'll just give it um, another description that's in there. Put whatever is meaningful for you in here. It's a, it's for you to, 
to it's give you information and how to determine what the key is being used for essentially. Click and create key. And as simple as that, I have an API key set up and ready to go. Um, what I'll just show you then is I'll pop my screen over onto Postman, which is essentially a tool for that all developers will be familiar with, other tools available, um, which we'll use to authenticate with the backend API and just make some calls to the API just to get some data to come back. So here we have um, the first point of call in terms of the public API, and that's the authentication. So I'm just going to call this API with the uh, appropriate information that's in the documentation in order to do that. And I get a bearer token back that allows me to use this to, to use any of the other APIs. Um, it has an expiry duration on it there. Um, and uh, you'll you'll need to renew that token. It's not something that's going to live forever. And um, in here, we're just going to make a call to get um, all of the users that are within the system. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right bearer token um, associated with this API call. And we're just going to hit public um, users and see what information we can get back. So in our cadence tenant, we have uh, 89 users that uh, we can um, get information on. And um, this API supports what you would expect in terms of uh, paging and filtering. So all of that information is available in the uh, public API documentation. Um, as an example, we're just going to do a filter on this. Um, to find me. So in here, I've been able to search the API. Now I've got two results because I've got two accounts associated with this particular user. And I can see that I'm here with all of the information that's um, associated with my account. I can then query to get all of the booking information that I have made. Um, so I would help if I put in the authentication type, and we'll just do that. And here we can see that I've made 240 bookings over the, the last period. Again, you can do filtering with on, within this API in order to reduce the, the skills or the uh, result set. And um, you can um, page it as you would expect. Again, all of the information for that is in the public API documentation, um, but I can search for um, bookings that are in a booked status, for example, they'll return back and tell me that um, I have five bookings that are uh, available for me to check into. Um, I can then check into one of these bookings by using the uh, check-in endpoint, and it's just specifying one of the IDs that are associated with each of these bookings in order to check in. Great, fantastic. So for um, thanks for showing us through that, Mark. Um, so Jamie, for perhaps less tech savvy people, what does that what does that look like in in practical terms, in a, in a few minutes, what can our customers do and implement within their workplaces to maybe automate check-ins um, and in, in whichever way they choose to, depending on what they ha already have set up? Yeah, and that's really, as we talked about a little bit at the top of this session as well, it's um, the sky is the limit. Anything that allows you to identify a user and get a, a an email address, which is what we use in our system to identify somebody, you can then use that to drive check-in. So if you can, like we've talked about, if you have a, a badging system on the door that can tell you when I've swiped in the door, you can use that to drive this. And if you think about Mark, very elegantly walked you through a quick example there of really this the step 
process that there is. And to non-technical people, it, it may seem overwhelming, but <clears throat> it is actually pretty simple for competent engineers to achieve in, you know, a matter of hours, really. Um, you would have the, the first proof of concept done probably in minutes. Um, and then by the time you've you've got that stood up and deployed and done some testing around it, you could you could do it in ours easily enough. And um, we are also looking at making this even easier for our less technical users by working with low code solutions to um, automate that so that you can use low code solutions like Zapier, for example, and just put in the credentials for your tenant. So you still need to go and create that API key. Um, and you would need the system that you are integrating with. So be it a, a door badging system such as Keezy, which has a Zapier integration. Um, and you can just connect those two things together. So you put in your API keys to authenticate to Keezy, you put in your API keys to authenticate to Cadence, you connect the two, um, systems together through a low code solution like Zapier. And in a matter of minutes, a non-technical person could have that set up and running. So really the, the sky is the limit in terms of what um, you want to achieve, even if you don't have technical resource on hand. Awesome. Guys, thank you. And, and to everyone else, um, I hope this has been really, really useful. Um, and again, um, do refer to our um, setup guides. Um, it's all there, but keep giving us feedback. Keep plugging away. Just get in contact with us with how maybe how you're using uh, check-in API or what cooler ideas that you may have as well to add on to that to give us something else to think about or what further challenges you may be experiencing that we can solve because we're always up for doing that. Um, we want to really try and make um, make uh, your your workplace as seamless and efficient as possible, just so everyone can thrive, just so that your team are super productive, just so that you're maximizing your spaces and you're maybe doing more with less space, um, so you're able to cut costs on your real estate footprint. Um, but again, I hope this has been useful. Um, comment below if you want to do that as well. Um, but until then, uh, keep watching this space and we wish you all the best. Thanks so much, guys.